Hi, this is Del Denny of TBC Action Coach of Indiana, and I want to welcome you to the Indiana Business Spotlight Series. The purpose of this series is to help promote businesses, because when businesses succeed, we all succeed. And today I've got a special guest. I've got Bill. Bill, welcome to the Spotlight. Thanks, Del. Now, before we get into your business, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Um, moved to Indiana 27 years ago, so been here a while. Uh, started a company called MMY Consulting uh, 18 years ago. We were really focused on healthcare and helping implement and optimize systems within hospitals, really. Everybody talks about healthcare, very broad term. We really focused on the provider side and specifically um, the hospitals. So uh, started that. Uh, last year, uh, merged MMY with Global CI. So I've been with them uh, for just over a year now, running the uh, the commercial division for those uh, for for our team. Fantastic. Now, tell us a little bit about um, MMY and uh, Global CI and and how that happened and what do you guys do? Yeah. So, so Global and MMY came together. We really saw an opportunity to um, to build on. Uh, the, the rich history Global had. They've been in business, we've been in business 29 years, and they really have deep roots and very uh, extensive knowledge in the federal sector side. So they're very active in, in these massive, large federal departments. And uh, a lot of their work was very applicable to the commercial side. So, you know, people probably don't realize just how many uh, things we hear about or deal with or do every day have actually had their genesis in uh, the federal government. So things like GPS started there. Um, uh, hepatitis A and B vaccines uh, were largely funded through federal programs. MRIs, uh, scans in the hospitals, um, and on and on. Um, so uh, tried and true path. And the game plan or the, the play really was to take a lot of their uh, deep knowledge uh, in, in a couple of departments, and specifically disability, Social Security Administration, and bring that to the commercial side. So um, for the last year, we've been doing that and um, really excited to, to, to keep it growing over here over the next several years. Fantastic. Now, if you had to do a, a 60 second commercial about what your business does, uh, sure. what, what would you say? Yeah, so Global CI really helps our clients um, optimize operations, whether that's uh, really have a, a strong technological perspective or uh, revenue cycle side. So we're working with, again, really hospitals to help them uh, optimize their operation, which, um, you know, we'll talk about COVID here in a little bit, but is has really been impacted by COVID and um uh, we're, we're doing that. We've been doing it 29 years. We've garnered over 50 awards, best places to work in modern healthcare, best places to work in Indiana, uh, fastest growing fly over 50, fastest growing uh, 50 firms in the Midwest. Uh, we've actually even had our team present at the White House on three different occasions. So, um, so again, just a little bit about Global One and who we are. That's amazing. Now, a lot of business owners uh, watch the Indiana Business Spotlight series. Um, on a side note, what what does it take to to be one of those businesses that are best place to work for? You know, it's uh, I view it as a lot of little things. It's uh, making sure you respond in a prompt way to the uh, to the to the inquiries. Making sure when an employee has a question, you you know, put down the laptop and listen to them and talk to them. Um, and, and you know, I find it's it's incredibly valuable if you do that. You, you just inherently make a culture that that fosters open communication. We always strive to um, when people ask why do why does someone want to work at global ci say you know we really want to build a culture that offers you the opportunity to do your best work that, that's why people want to work with us because we're going to give you an opportunity to do your best work so again a lot of little things uh recognition certainly understanding employees and what's driving them and, and what the challenges they're having um and and just taking the time to to make sure you you really pay attention. That's great advice right there. Now, 
the Indiana Business Spotlight series came about because of the pandemic. We wanted to spotlight businesses mm -hmm. because a lot of them, you know, a handful folded, a handful had a pivot. You know, you've been in business 29 years and, and in the healthcare industry as well. Um, what changes did you have to make uh, in, in your business during that time? Yeah, so, so early on, it was um, really brutal for the providers. You know, all elective procedures stopped. The American Hospital Association uh, noted that uh, hospitals lost $320 billion last year. So it, it does cascade to, to all their partners. You know, early on, um, the non-mission critical projects we were seeing come down the pipe. These aren't trivial or unimportant. They just were things that weren't absolutely essential. Got put on hold. You know, a lot of them uh, last March, April, May just said with the impact to, to the financials, we can't move forward with them. So initially um, it was a hit. The work we had going on largely stayed in place, the projects we were doing, but um, but since that point, you know, elective procedures are coming back. There's still work to be done, a lot of it. And it's actually helped us accelerate some of the offerings I mentioned earlier that we're bringing into the commercial sector. Abik will talk about that uh, in a minute or so. But, uh, but now we've really seen an influx of work uh, needs to be done and uh, even higher levels of interest in the work that's directly tied to helping their financial position and, and helping the people. You know, the people were so hard hit during this pandemic and hospitals um, have, have a tremendous amount of charity care they provide and really serving the, the uninsured or underinsured population. So we've seen quite a bit of interest and activity accelerate over the last six months. Fantastic. Now, you, you mentioned Abiqua, uh, and that's a, a facet of your business. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So, so uh, Abiqua really is the, uh, the, the premier way we're, we're taking a lot of that knowledge and base that we've developed over the last two decades in the federal side, bringing it to commercial market. Really what Abiqua is, is a way for hospitals to, um, to do two direct things and one ancillary thing. It's, it's a way for them to help capture unrealized revenue. So if you'll indulge me for just one minute, when an individual comes into a hospital. A hospital is going to provide service regardless of that individual's ability to pay Dell. So, um, you know, some people just don't have the resources and the hospital still, you know, has, has a cost associated with that. Well, um, we know from our work that a portion of those individuals would qualify for disability. And when they do that, they qualify for Medicaid and Medicare almost instantly. So, um, so here we can help hospitals identify those individuals, which means um, A, they can be compensated for their care. B, they can look at that individual on more than an episodic basis, right? So they come in and they have an issue, they treat them, stabilize them, and that individual leaves. And, and now, you know, they can say really, hey, let's look at you. Maybe we've got a hint that you have prediabetes or maybe you have diabetes. Maybe there are some things cardio uh, or cardiology um, wise or, or other issues that we really should, let's put together a plan. So it's really a way for them not only to, to help cash flow again uh, and financials that have been accentuated with the pandemic issues, but also help that individual. And, and I mentioned the third thing, really, um, when you help those individuals, you're, you're also helping the community. You know, you're helping their family. The receiving treatment they need can be more productive parts of, of, um, of our community and, and be more active. So it, it really does impact on all three levels. That, that's fantastic. Um, when Now going along with the business side of things, you know, as someone that oversees the business and, and helps it run, the, you know, great place to work. Um, you know, we, we have our successes, we have our failures, and they say that, you know, smart people learn from their mistakes and wise people learn from uh, other people's mistakes. And like we said, you know, business owners watch this. And so uh, what, what are some learning lessons that you've had uh, over the last year that might be able to help other business owners? Um, all right, I'll give you two, one practical, one a bit more theoretical, but both valid. Um, so from a practical side, if there's some young business owners here just starting out or within their first 
five years of a business, I'd encourage them to, to take any credit they can. You know, uh, at home, you get offers for credit cards all the time. Businesses do too. But establish the business's credit early and often, even if you don't use them, even if you don't need it. Open them up, and that'll really help uh, when you hit five, 10 years, when you're getting into you know, seven figures, eight figures of revenue, uh, establishing that credit. So just on a very practical basis, uh, do that. Um, and from a uh, more, uh, not necessarily theoretical perspective, but uh, I'll, I'll offer, you know, don't beat yourself up too much for, for taking a shot. You know, there is no reward without risk. There's no success without trying. So um, I know early on, I, I you know, went after some business that didn't pan out or I tried a few new things and you think, man, I could have spent my time and invested it in other areas. My money could have been used better over here. At the end of the day, you got to say, if you think it's, it's a worthwhile shot, take it. Don't, uh, and if it doesn't work out, move on. Just don't beat yourself up. So try not to do it twice, right? Let's hope that happens, <laughs> but uh, do that. So. Well, very good. Um, where, can, where can we find more information about Global CI? Yeah, globalci.com uh, is uh, our front door, you know, on the web. Uh, we've got Facebook page, Instagram, um, all of those areas uh, are, uh, you know, are out there. Um, myself, Bill Monachino at globalci.com. That uh, is M-O-N-A-C-H-I-N-O. I'm glad to uh, to take any messages and give you a call if you'd like. Fantastic. And we'll make sure that we'll, we uh, put all the, the details in the note description as well. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. Bill, one last question for you. Sure. Uh, we always like to end with a little inspiration here. Bill, what inspires you the most today? Um, you know, it, it really is very moving when you're able to impact people's lives and, uh, and Ubiqua specifically, as well as a couple other uh, uh, of our offerings really do have direct impact. And, uh, and it is very inspirational when you, when you see someone who, you know, was uh, really helped could be much more engaged, uh, you know, has, has a, uh, a better life because of some of the work we're doing. It is a very inspirational thing. Uh, it's one of the things that led me to healthcare way back when we started in on it, you know, almost 20 years ago, and um, still really is inspirational to me today. That's fantastic. Well, Bill, thank you so much for coming on the Indiana Business Spotlight. We appreciate your words of wisdom and uh, being able to learn more about you. So thank you for coming on. Thanks, Dale. Have a great day. All right. Thank you very much. This concludes this session of the Indiana Business Spotlight. Thank you very much.